Good evening, I'm Pastor Dan Tilly, the Senior Pastor at Guest Road Baptist Church, and we're glad you're joining us for our midweek prayer meeting. Remind you, all of our services are online. You can watch them on Facebook, YouTube, and on the web page for our church. Uh, also, Sunday morning services are drive-in services at 1030. You can come in, tune your radio, and hear the service live and watch, and uh, we will be outside there with you. Uh, starting next Sunday morning, we will begin revival. It's drive-in revival. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, uh, through Wednesday night. Uh, morning is at 10.30. Uh, the evenings will be at 7 o'clock. I encourage you to come out and be a part of that. Invite others to come and share with us in those revivals meetings. Also, I encourage you to be praying for our revival. That it will not be just a set of meetings, but it will be a time of true revival, turning to the Lord and God blessing us. I uh, want to share with you that we're going to be doing um, a treat trail this year. It is not trunks of treats. You will not get out of your car. You will come in, drive through. There will be some scenes depicting uh, the Bible in general throughout, and then a time at the end where you can uh, talk to someone if you so desire and receive a Bible. Uh, there at each station, you'll be given a little bit of candy in a bag. This is for children from... Uh, birth through uh, 13 years of age there so I encourage you to come out and be a part of that also share with you that we have on our website a prayer list you can make prayer requests there and additions there as uh, you see need so please make use of that again we're glad to have you with us uh, this evening and let's begin with a word of prayer father in heaven we thank you so very much for the love and the grace that is ours every day we say that dear god but your love is beyond measure your grace is infinite, dear Father, and that you have forgiven us and allowed us to be saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Father, we pray that our time tonight will be uh, well spent in the prayer of those in need, and also, dear Father, in the time of studying your words. We ask your blessing on it in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. On our website, you can find our prayer list there. Um, it's broken down into several areas. We will not share the individual names because some people do not wish for their name to be shared in public. But there are some things we do want to pray for, and I mention these each week. We want to pray for our missionaries at home and abroad, uh, our firemen, police officers, first responders, our health care workers, the pandemic, our military. Uh, invitation Sunday is we'd like to invite you to come on the fourth Sunday of every month to share and be a part of that. Revival is coming up, as I shared with you in general. Of course, we want to pray for our nation and our, uh, the upcoming election. We're not telling you who to vote for by any means. Not would not dare to try to do that. But we do encourage you to go out and vote. also want to pray for all the social issues that are going on uh, throughout the world. Of course, I would remind you to please be in prayer for the lost as they need Jesus Christ. They need the uh, experience his grace and his mercy and to receive salvation by him uh, finally i'd encourage you to always pray god praise god to give him glory and honor and praise for who he is psalms 113 3 says from from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same the lord's name is to be praised we are to praise god at all times and always uh, because he is a gracious, loving, caring, compassionate, forgiving God. So I encourage you to please uh, spend that time there. Again, I share with you that we have a prayer list there. If you'd like to put someone on that, you can do it privately or publicly on our web page there. Then our prayer team will take that and put it on the prayer list. And it is mailed out by email uh, to our members there so that they can be in prayer for those needs. Please take and make use of that as you can. At this time, let's bow our heads and let's go to the Lord in prayer, if you will. Our gracious Father in heaven, we do come to thy throne of mercy and grace, and we come boldly as your word teaches us, dear Father, and we come, dear God, to lift up to you praise, honor, and glory, because we know that you are the one true living God. We know that you, dear Father, are the God of salvation, the God of creation, the God of grace and love and mercy. We know that you are the giver of all good and perfect gifts. You give us all spiritual blessings, dear Father, that you provide for all of our needs through the riches of Christ Jesus in glory uh, as your people. Also, Father, we know that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask, think, or imagine by the very power that worketh in us for your glory in Christ Jesus in the church. So, Father, we lift up to you the prayer requests and concerns that are not only 
on the prayer list, dear Father, but for all those that are upon the hearts of those who are watching and listening and for all the needs of your people, dear Father, not only at Guest Road, but for around the world, dear Father. We do want to pray, dear God, for our nation and pray for your blessing for our nation. We pray that we will be revived as a nation, dear Father, returning to you and have a great restoring of faith in you and trust in you, dear Father. And, Father, we pray that Christians will be praying for that end and will be working to that end by loving you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength and loving others as you love us and by fulfilling your great commission to go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever you have commanded us. Father, each and every day of our life, we go through life and we sometimes have the ups and downs and we pray for those that are experiencing the downs at this time. Dear Father, those that are sick in rest homes, nursing homes, those who are in the hospitals, those who are having loved ones that are sick and suffering or have lost loved ones, we lift them all up to you and just pray for your mighty grace and mercy to be upon them. Father, tonight as we have our Bible study, we ask you to lead it. And we ask this in the name of Jesus, the name above all names. Amen. This evening, we're going to continue in our series of studies concerning prayer. Uh, thus far, we've looked at three things about prayer. We've seen that we're to always pray, to never cease in our praying. We've seen how Jesus says that we are to pray authentic prayers. Um, that are, or excuse me, uh, how Jesus says we are to pray authentic prayers. And then thirdly, uh, that our prayers are to be penetrating deep into our lives that we might grow within our, our own personal sanctification in relationship to God. Now tonight, for our first, fourth study in prayer, we're going to be dealing with uh, uh, here an issue that many of us uh, face and have in our prayer lives. And this issue is, of course, um, unanswered prayer. As a pastor, I cannot tell you the number of times that I've heard people tell me God doesn't answer my prayers or it doesn't seem that God's answering my prayers. And I even have to admit that it's sometimes in my own life that, that I have had those same feelings that God is not answering my prayers. But I can assure you, I assure you uh, that God does answer our prayers. He not only just hears them, but he answers them. He responds to them without exception. He responds to them without fail. In the scripture, we read uh, Jesus uh, saying, Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Now, when we read that, what oftentimes happens in our own mind is that we begin to look at these words, asking it will be given you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open. And we begin to look at this and we think that this is an open invitation from God to us to ask anything and everything that we would desire, that we would want, that we would like to have in our life. And we, we see this as an invitation to open, to, to open, to pray, to ask God these things in accordance with our will, our purpose, and not in accordance with God's will and God's purpose. And so what happens is we pray prayers, and these prayers are not answered or at least they're not answered in the way we want them to be answered. The request is made, but the answer is not given as we're expecting, as we're uh, requesting to be made of God. And therefore what happens is we say, well, God doesn't answer our prayers because we are asking him and he says, ask and it will be given. Seek and you'll find, knock and the door shall be open. And so we're asking and then we're not receiving the answers. Tonight, we're going to learn the truth. We're going to see the truth in Scripture that God does always answer prayer. There's no such thing as unanswered prayer from God. There's just answers that we don't agree with. It's just answers that we don't want, answers that are not the answer that we're desiring God to give to our request. Now, for us to see this, let's turn over to the Gospel of Mark. I hope you will take your Bible and turn over there to the Gospel of Mark, to the 10th chapter. And we're going to look at verses 35 through 40 uh, this evening. So let me read these verses to you here. It says, And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on the right hand 
and the other on the left hand in glory. But Jesus said unto them, You know not what you ask. Can you drink the cup I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized of? And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized, with all shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. Let us pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, we would ask again as we do each time we open your word for your divine illumination that you would give us an understanding of it, not only in our mind but our heart, and allow us, dear God, to take this understanding and to be able to apply it to our daily lives, dear Father. We ask this, dear Father, that we might grow closer to you and be used of you in this world, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as we look at this passage of Scripture, we tend to think that Jesus did not answer James and John's request for Jesus to allow one to sit on his right hand and one to sit on his left hand in glory. But the truth here is that we're mistaken. Jesus did answer their request, just as Jesus, just as God answers our prayers. Jesus really did answer James and John's request, but his answer was not the answer that they were looking for. It was not the answer that they were expecting to hear from Jesus, and thus we know it was not in accordance with God's will. But we do know that it was answered. You see, what James and John wanted to do was they wanted to answer, got Jesus to answer their request by saying, okay, one of you will be on my right, one of you will be on my left. But Jesus did not say that to them. He did not answer it that way. Instead, Jesus said it was not his to give. It was preordained for whomever God the Father had set up for it to be. Now, let's notice several things here so we can put this picture together and we can see the answer, see why the answer was no, and then take some lessons from these these truths here. First, notice the heart of James and John, which led to their request uh, of Jesus, their master, to allow them to sit on the right hand and the left hand of him in glory. That is revealed to us as it says, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall ask. James and John's request here is totally, completely self-centered. It is selfish. It can be viewed as a power grab. We can see that it is completely devoid of God's will and God's purpose. We can see that it is full of selfish pride. This is coming out of their human nature for their own edification, their own blessing, for them to be lifted up and to be put in positions of authority and power, to be put in positions where people would see them as being important. Now, many would argue that their view of Jesus' kingdom to come was certainly skewed at this point in time because they did not understand Jesus' place, and we'll discuss that in just a moment. But any way we look at this, it is completely selfish, selfish self-centered, power-grabbing, devoid of God's will, and full of pride. This type of personal vanity actually puts us or helps us or allows us or it sets us up where we are placing ourselves above God and above others. They had, James and John, had no inkling of what God's will might have been. It was just their will. So they were putting themselves ahead of or above God. They didn't care about the other disciples. They didn't care about other people. So they were putting themselves above other people there. This type of vanity makes us change our view of God from our Lord to our errand boy, to our sugar daddy. Well, God's there. God loves me. God ought to do what I want, when I want, how I want. But God loves us. Therefore, he cannot do what we want, when we want, and how we want. He has to answer our prayers in accordance with his will because his will, his way, his purpose is perfect. But our way, our will, our purpose is skewed because we live in a sinful world. So it is out of this heart of selfishness here in self-centered, power-grabbing, devoid of God's will and full of pride that we find James and John asking Jesus to allow them to sit on his right and his left in his glory there. Now, secondly, 
Let's note that James and John really didn't understand the depth of the breadth of their request to sit on the right hand and the left hand of Jesus in glory. Look at what it says. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what you ask. James and John misunderstood the whole situation. They misunderstood everything, and therefore they made a request out of that ignorance. You see, they did not fully understand God's plan. They didn't understand God's plan was for Christ to die as payment for the sins of man. They were thinking in terms probably of an earthly kingdom. They did not understand Jesus' purpose to save men, to come and to die and to shed his innocent blood and to pay the sin debt of man and to have his righteousness applied to the lives of people. They did not understand their place that they were going to be the ones who God gave, that Jesus gave the continuation of his work as they were to go and make disciples uh, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever God had commanded them. Not only did they not understand God's plan for eternal salvation, they didn't understand Jesus' purpose, they didn't understand their place, but they didn't understand their purpose. Their purpose was not to elevate self, but to elevate others to God and to glorify God, lifting God up. And Jesus taught that to his disciples when he washed their feet to be a servant. And that's the idea of who, who shall be first shall be last, and he who is first shall be last there. And so James and John did not understand, and this limited understanding skewed their request. And this understanding, this skewed understanding, meant that their request was completely and totally out of line with the will of God. It had nothing to do with what God was planning. It had nothing to do with God's purpose of the redemption of man. It had nothing to do with why Jesus was there. It had nothing to do with being a disciple of Christ. It had nothing to do with being a servant of God and serving other people whatsoever. So they were asking this request out of a, a selfish, self-centered, power-grabbing, uh, full of pride, void of God's will, uh, in, the, in their own selves, lifting themselves above others and making God their sugar daddy. And they were asking this in a skewed understanding as they had no understanding of God's purpose and God's way and God's plan and, and for their how Jesus fit in and how they fit in to this. So they were asking in those things. And then let's notice a third thing here and let's note how Jesus actually responds here uh, when he says, but to sit on my right hand and my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them whom it is prepared. Here we see Jesus doing the exact opposite thing that James and John were doing. James and John was all about self. Jesus is all about the Father in heaven. He humbled himself before God, knowing that God, his Father in heaven, was God. Yes, Jesus was fully God, but he set himself aside and he set himself below the Father to be obedient. So he humbled himself and he obeyed the Father and he said, this is not mine to give. It's not my right. It's not my authority. It's not my place. It's not my purpose. It's not what I am supposed to be doing. This is all the Father's there. So what Jesus is actually doing here is he is saying, okay, I'm going to stay in the will of God. I'm going to stay with the purpose of God. I'm going to stay within the bounds of which I am set as the Son of God and the Redeemer of man. And so I don't have the right or the authority to say to you, yes, you can sit on the right and on the left of, of me in glory there. That's the Father's. And it's already been decided by the Father who will have those positions there. So... Those three truths lead us to what? When we see that James and John's um, vanity caused them to make this request, we see that they, excuse me, make this request completely out of um, that selfishness and out of line, uh, out of a bad understanding. And when we see Jesus' full uh, submission and humility before the Father to stay in line with God's will, we learn that Jesus' answer to James and John's request is no. No, you cannot sit on my right and on my left of me in glory. Jesus blatantly just says no. It's implied there, yes, but it is a blatant, full-fledged no. You cannot sit on my right hand or my left hand and at all. 
This is an implied answer, and it is the answer that was given. But James and John probably thought, well, Jesus never really answered when he did. You see, they had the same mindset more than likely that we have. And that mindset is, well, God didn't answer my prayer. Jesus didn't answer my prayer the way I wanted it. Jesus didn't bend his will to my will. And so therefore, there was no answer when there was an answer. And that answer was absolutely no. All too often, we are like that. We have this mindset. And we think that God is there to serve us and rather than us there to serve God. And so when we make these requests of God... We see that God, and we see that God doesn't answer them the way we want in our time frame and in our will. We think, well, God didn't answer our prayers, but God does. He just says no. Now, why does God say no? Why does Jesus say no? Well, look at why he told James and John no to their request to sit on the right and the left hand. His, their request was out of line with God's will. I keep saying that over and over. It was out of line with God's will. How was it out of line with God's will? Well, it was self-centered and selfish. It was not in accordance with God's kingdom work. It was not in accordance with the glory of God. It was not going to please God. It wasn't going to further the kingdom of God. It wasn't theirs to ask for to start with. It belittled God. It tried to bend God to their will. And so, therefore, Jesus answered no to their request. Now, what do we learn? What we learn is simply this. God does answer our prayers. God just doesn't answer them the way we want them answered. I know many people that will say to me, well, I'm praying for God to heal me. And I had one, one very fine lady in one of my churches and she was her husband had cancer and she was praying for his his to be sealed, healed and he was just getting sicker and sicker and finally it come down to the point that the doctors came in and said well there's there's no hope he's going to die whatsoever and she just still clung to the idea that he was going to be healed and she clung to that and she should have in her faith because God could have healed him at any point in time in the process, well, he passed away. He went to glory. Yes, he was saved and he went to heaven to be with the Father uh, there for all eternity in the very presence of God. But when he passed away, she said, God didn't heal him. God did heal him. He just didn't heal him the way she wanted him healed. God healed him spiritually in his salvation. And God healed him physically in taking him to heaven where he received his new body and his new life where there would never be any more sickness or disease or pain or sorrow or suffering or anything whatsoever. So there's no such thing as unanswered prayer. It's just prayer that is not answered the way we want it to be answered. And the cause of these prayers that we call unanswered, but are really just prayers answered God's way rather than our way, is we ask askew. We ask in misunderstanding, just as James and John did. We ask in selfishness. We ask in a way that belittles God. We ask, and it's not in accordance with how God is going to further his kingdom. I'm reminded of a, a event that happened in my life, and that event was these two young ladies were in college, and their dad passed away. Very unexpected. And they just took it very hard, which, of course, would be normal. Years later, I met these two young ladies, and they were through with school and married and grown and saw them at some event. I think it was a homecoming or something I was doing at that church. And as I was talking to them and, uh, about their life and how they were serving in the church where they lived and everything, one of them said and the other one agreed, if our dad hadn't have died, we'd have never been saved. You know they didn't want their dad to die. You know they were asking God not to take him. But God took him and it was for God's glory and God's will. 
we may not understand how God was using that, but God answered, and God answered it his way. Over the coming weeks, let's, let's just do one little thing. Let's just spend a little time every day, and let's examine our prayer request. Let's take a, an inventory of what we're asking God and why. Let's take an inventory and let's consider whether our prayers are like James and John's. That they are out of selfishness and pride. Ask ourselves, are they God-honoring and God-glorifying? Kingdom-furthering or kingdom-hindering? When we take this little survey, if you will, of our prayers, we may discover that God really has been answering our prayers all along. He's just not been answering them the way we wanted them answered. And it may just help us to discover that we need to change how we make our request of God. That our request would be in accordance with His will, His way, His purpose. That our request would be not selfish and self-honoring, but be God-honoring and kingdom-furthering. Then we'll stop hearing no's and we'll start getting resounding yes. Let us pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, we are so thankful that you do hear and answer our prayers. And Father, we pray your forgiveness when we pray out accordance with your will and we pray, dear God, seeking our own glory, our own edification. We pray, dear God, that you will lay it upon us to pray in accordance with your will. Just as Jesus taught us, thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. That our prayers could be answered, dear Father, with yeses rather than noes. We thank you, Father, for the gift of prayer. And we pray we will not abuse it, but we will use it and use it wisely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope and pray you have a wonderful week. God blesses you, gives you opportunity to serve him, and that as you pray, you will pray earnestly for God's will to be done. Have a wonderful evening. God bless.